It's good to see you, visitors. Glad to have you here this morning. Can we get a hand clap for our visitors this morning? Amen, amen, amen. Now, you should have on your table a box there and uh, has these little visitor's cards in there. Little visitor's cards, if you wouldn't mind filling that out for us and either just leave it on the table there or you can give it to Mr. Terry. Everybody say hi, Mr. Terry. Hi, Mr. Terry. Mr. Terry here, and he'd be glad to get those for you, and you probably be hearing from him. And I really appreciate that ministry, Mr. Terry, that you do for this church. Uh, but please see him and give that to him. I'd sure appreciate it. Uh, another thing, really quick, uh, Miss Jane Perry is still on the mend, okay? Uh, uh, and she is uh, still not doing well. Um, but we do ask that you help them, okay? And Miss Martha has set up a food train, uh, calendar type thing, right? Meal train, Meal train thank you. Um, and so if you are interested in helping with meals, and I know I heard some of you say, what do they need? Uh, Miss Martha has been there, and she's been starting to take food, but she needs some help, okay? And so if y'all could help Miss Martha help the Perry family, uh, she would be grateful. And I know you guys uh, have been really wanting to find out how you can help. Also, uh, we're going to be looking at a ways uh, to help out around the, around the house, too. So uh, if we find something that we need to do, we need a, gr- a group of guys together, then you'll be hearing from me about that too, okay? If, if uh, he says, hey, I need some help. But guys, we don't like to ask for help though. Uh, <laughs> sometimes we just gotta show up and get it done, amen? Uh, do I have any other announcements? Okay, well, that's good. It was nice and easy today. Uh, before we break up and do our five minutes of moment to give, I just wanted to tell you we've got a couple of quilts over here. Please come down during that time if you can. And, uh, and be a part of these uh, quilts that we got Elena Nolan and Cody Rand- uh, Corey Randall. I can't read that far. Thank you, Corey Randall. Um, if y'all would come down, pray over these and tie a double knot uh, as you do, we'll get those delivered to them. Uh, also, yes, ma'am. Uh, the women's quilting is next Saturday. Thank you. Coming Saturday. This coming Saturday, women's quilting here. What time do y'all usually get here? Nine to four. Okay, but they have a, a kind of a speaker, Bible study, and lunchtime right about 12. So you can come for just that if you want. Thank you very much. And they do a lot of work. Can we give a hand clap for the ladies? That is a lot of work, and it means a whole lot, Brother Richard. You can. On these prayer quilts, it's very important to some people. My brother and my brother-in-law, Coy, about the size of Brandon, maybe three inches taller. He probably weighed 240, 250, and it wasn't a pound of fat on him. He had bladder cancer. He's, he's doing pretty good, and he's got massive infections from it. He's down to about 145 pounds. And so I'm going to ask everybody here to come up and tie a knot so I can get this to him before he's gone. Yeah, thank you, brother. Thank you. These are very, very important, guys, uh, that we take part in this. And it is an extension of the love and of what Jesus is doing in our heart out of this church and into the hands of the people that that need it. So thank you, brother, for making those, putting a face to these, because sometimes they're just names to us who do not know. Um, Any other announcements? I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, uh, also, in the back, we have a blessing barrel. During our breakout session, a moment to give, give some prayers. Blessing barrels back there in the corner. We don't pass an offering plate. Uh, And then one of my favorite parts is give somebody a hug around the neck. Find somebody you don't know or maybe somebody that needs a little love and prayer this morning. And let's take five minutes and let's minister to one another. So y'all stand and minister however the Lord leads you.
my cry, oh God, listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I call to you, and when my heart is overwhelmed, when my heart's overwhelmed, lead me to the rock,
between us by the cross you came and broke them down you broke them down and there were chains around us by your grace we are no longer bound no longer bound you called me out of the grave you called me into the light you called my name and then my heart came alive all right we're gonna go ahead and get back to our seats by the way, uh, during our time of invitation and time of response, uh, don't, don't, uh, don't feel weirded out if when we're worshiping and responding to the Lord at the end of the service uh, that you see people come and tie knots. That's perfectly fine if uh, during that time God leads you to spend some time in prayer. Also, before and after church, any of those times, guys, we want to invite you to come and be in prayer over, the, over these people here. Um, <clears throat> I've got another announcement. It's actually a testimony. Brother David asked if he could give a testimony this morning. So, Brother David, you come on up. Well, on first, up. if I start crying, I'm sorry. Uh, Richard got up here and shared the important, you know, asking for prayer for this blanket and tying the knots. Uh, some of you, most of you know my mom on the 22nd, she had two heart attacks and died twice. They brought her back. You folks did a quilt real quick, prayed over it, and she's now off the ventilator. She's off all connections. She's in rehab, getting stronger, and hopefully she'll be home real soon. You know, they were talking about a trach, and now it's not a trach. It's coming home. So Amen. Prayers work. Cover them with your prayers. Amen. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. <clears throat> All right, if I call your name, could I get you to come down here real quick? <clears throat> Colton Latham. Colton Latham, come on down here. All right, come on, just going to stand right here. Smile and look pretty. You, you good looking man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Michael Savage. Michael Savage, come on down, Brother Michael. <laughs> Miss McKenzie, you know where you're at. Come on down, McKenzie. Cameron Rawson. Hey, you can bring that baby to me. <laughs> Just say it. Come here. Is Mr. Chance Gardner here? Not here? I think we got some out today. Shelby Vaughn, I didn't see her this morning. And Zach Reaper is not here this morning. I'll have to catch them another time. But these are, uh, these are certificates of baptism. You will take these to heaven when you go and show them to St. Peter. <laughs> I'm just joking. You don't do that. <laughs> But guys, we, uh, we, I just want to say, giving these guys to you again, it's almost like we're that moment again. It brings it back, you know. And uh, I absolutely love that you're a part of this body and that you have joined the, the kingdom of Christ. And uh, I love being your pastor. I love you guys. And so I want to pray for them, and then we'll send, we'll send them on our way. So God, I just thank you, Lord, for the walk that you invite us into. God, I thank you for the family, the kingdom, Lord, the adoption that you bring us into. So, Father, I pray over these right now, Lord, standing here with me, Father, God, that you continue to do your work. You said you are faithful to complete that which you have started. So, Lord, I thank you for your amazing grace. Lord, I thank you for the walk. I thank you for being a good father. Lord, help us as a body wrap around them, Lord, and show them the way as we walk in the way. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, now let's go ahead and have our pastor's partners come down. Pastor's partners, all, all your little knee-high to grasshopper. Y'all come on down here. Awesome, awesome. All right, I'm going to need a little bit of help on this, and things might get dark for just a second. Uh, so can we shut that door back there and that door right there for me? And Brother Joseph, could you do me a big favor and turn them lights off real quick? There we go. Come on down. It might get a little dark in here. There we go. That is kind of dark, isn't it? That is kind of dark. Can y'all see me okay? Can y'all see me? Is it that dark where you can't see me? Can I sneak up on you and you wouldn't even know it? No, it's not that dark yet. Okay, all right. Well, I won't do that, okay? Well, how many of you know that there is a scripture in, there's a scripture that says uh, that the word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, Okay. And I want to talk to you for just a moment about that. 
the word, everybody say the word, is a lamp to my feet. Let me see your feet. Oh, those are pretty feet. And a light, and a light, y'all repeat it for me, and a light to my path. Have you ever got up in the middle of the night and it was dark and you tried to walk down the hallway and you stubbed your little toe? Yes. Didn't you wish you had a nightlight or something that that wouldn't have happened? It happens all the time. And did you know it's kind of like that when we're walking with God? Sometimes we're walking through places that doesn't seem very, very light, but God says he lights the way. And this, I have a little lamp here. See if I can do this without burning the house down. Okay. Y'all pray for me. There we go. And I got a little lamp here. See if I can't make this a little bigger. There we go. Now I can see better, right? But how silly would it be if you were going to walk to the outhouse? Do y'all even know what an outhouse is? It's a bathroom on the outside with no plumbing. It's got spiders and all the fun stuff in it, okay? It was a, it was a, it was a prayer session every time you went. I promise you that, okay? And so <laughs> some of y'all remember the double outhouse. That was fun. We are family, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> and so wouldn't it be silly if you said, well, I can't go, I can't see. And they said, well, grab a lamp. And then you grabbed the lamp, but you didn't light it. And you just said, okay, I got my lamp, I'm walking. Wouldn't that be silly? What do you have to do to the lamp first before you go out there? You got to light it, right? You got to put the fire to it. And then, then you can see because the light of the lamp within the lamp helps out. So many times we could carry around our Bibles that way too. And we could say, well, I got my Bible, or maybe you can even say, well, I read my Bible. But if you don't let God do the work inside of you, it's almost like walking around with a lamp with no light inside of it. We need the Spirit of God, the fire of God to be inside of us so that we can see not only what the words say on the page, but what they really mean inside of our hearts. Did you know that James says that the word is almost like a mirror? And when we look into it, that word of God helps us to see what kind of person we are. And that's the kind of light that God wants to shine on you so that you could really see how well you look. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I could see y'all. Y'all see these faces now? Y'all see these faces now that the light is close enough, you could see what they're really like. And so today, that is what we're going to talk about. So never forget It's not just important to have a Bible. Anybody can carry a Bible. But if you really want to walk with God, you got to ask God to help turn the light on, okay? So you can see what he wants for you. Second thing is, it's a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. The Bible tells you how to go down the path, and it shows the way. And what else does the light do? It helps you prevent from dangers like stubbing your toe. Amen? Running into a wall, I've been there too. Those walls don't move, do they? No. No. So we got to make sure that we have the light of God inside of us, helping us in the word so that we can know what he wants. Let me pray for these young people. Father, God, I pray, Lord, that you turn on the light. God, I pray for every single one of us, Lord, that it that not just come for a religious ceremony, Lord, or even uh, I've got my Bible and there's no dust on it. But, Lord, God, we ask that you illuminate, Father, our hearts illuminate the soul, and God, help us to find the path, Lord, by the guidance of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, Joseph, you can turn them lights back on. Let's give these youngins a hand as we go upstairs. I think, Miss Donna, do you have them today? Follow Miss Donna right there. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. There you go. Good job, young people. Donna, thank you so much for working with our little ones. We're going to wait on that. Yes, yes. Awesome, awesome. Well, guys, everybody else, y'all turn to the book of James. Turn to the book of James. That's where we're going to spend most of our time today. And I got some really good news. As of yesterday, this sermon shortened by (laughs) two-thirds. Yes, I I have so much I want to share with you guys, and I'm really excited about it, but I was like, no, 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 no. Uh, The Spirit said, to do this justice, we need bite sizes. How many of you like bite sizes more than than the fire hydrant coming at you? Amen. 
Amen. Because I can only handle just so much uh, anyway. But I did want to take some time uh, instead uh, of, of expounding on this topic that we're on right now. I did want to take some time and do a kind of a, um, a real quick synopsis review of last week. Okay, guys, this is important. This is so important. Um, I believe if we miss this, we miss the boat. Okay, uh, and I'm not just talking about being secured in our salvation. The scripture says Christ takes care of that. The Holy Spirit confirms it in us, and we are secure in Him. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about after birth. I'm talking about after you are saved, sanctified, adopted, and I'm talking about the walk now, okay? Now that you are adopted and you're brought into this kingdom of God, the question is, as a church, how do we operate in that, amen? Because if we just say, well, I'm saved and then still act like the devil and we bring that in here and anywhere else we want to go and we are uh, none the better, none the further along, and the world around us is none the better because of our existence in Christ, right? It's one of those, hey, I got my certificate, I'm, I'm good to go. And guys, God has got such a ministry in your heart, right? In our hearts and in my heart. And guys, I know this may sound elementary to some of you, but guys, this is big stuff. This is big stuff. Last week, we talked about four different places that as you are empowered, as you go, how scripture tells us to walk. No, we were following Jesus. Now he got baptized, right? We're following Jesus and he got baptized. Uh, the spirit of the Lord descended on him. Heaven opened up. God spoke. This is my son and who I'm well pleased. Y'all remember? Okay. So we have this, first of all, we have a place of empowerment. Okay. A place of empowerment. I would hope that this is one of those places for you. That church is a place of empowerment. I would hope that your quiet time with God in the mornings is a place of empowerment for maybe on your way to work or wherever the case may be. This is a place where God speaks to you. This is my son. You are my daughter. I'm well pleased in you. My grace is sufficient for you. Amen? How many of you ever receive those kind of talks from God sometimes? I need them. I need that reassurance in my life. I need God continually speaking to me because guess who else is speaking to me? Amen. Amen. All the time. All the time. So I need to hear from my father on the, uh, on the regular. So we have a place of empowerment. Then we know that the spirit of the Lord drew him into the desert to be tested by the devil. We know that. So the second place is this place of testing. Uh, hands up. How many of you last week went through a place of testing? Okay. All right. Well, I'm preaching to the right crowd now. Okay. So we talked about last week, this is only a test, okay? This is only a test. So uh, let me ask it a different way. When is the last time your worry meter, uh, when is the last time your emotional tachometer, when is the last time your life's pressure gauge hit the red line? My worry meter, <clears throat> my tachometer. Some of y'all can go from zero to... 100 like that, right? I mean, like the tachometer is like, yeah, you know, you get red. It even shows red, you know? Uh, it's like, so you got your worry meter, your, your emotional tachometer. It's just when it's redlining, you know, your life's pressure gauge where it just feels like you're about to implode under the pressures of life. Now, let me see your hands if you hit that red line this week. Okay, I got a few more hands up, okay? So we know very well what those feel like. So it's the same question. When have you been tested this week? So many times we get that emotional feeling. We feel that worry like crazy, and life just gets hard because it is, okay, more times than others. And the thing is, is if we don't see this as a test, we failed already. If we don't see that God has got all of this, then we've already failed because the only strength that we really have is in him. And if, and if he's apart from that, then how can we be strong enough to overcome it? Amen? How can we be strong enough to overcome it? So this is what I'd like for you to do. 
Uh, just a little, uh, this is actually like a counseling kind of a, a thing here. Uh, just close your eyes for just a second, and I'm going to help you with something. If you do this and you do it well, I'm going to help you with something, and hopefully the next time you see that red line, okay? So this is what I want you to imagine. Uh, I want you to imagine a gauge on a car or a gauge, okay? I want you just to just imagine it the best you can, Okay? And then this gauge has a green area where the needle goes, and it's green, which means you're cool, everything's good. And then it gets really straining, and it comes all the way over into this red zone, okay? Now, this is what I want you to do. On, on this needle, wherever you're visualizing this, on a car, or on a gauge, I want you to see on this needle words written on the red saying, this is only a test. So as that gauge comes up, I want you not to see the red, but I want you to see the words, this is only a test. You'll thank me later. <laughs> Exercise over. Exercise over. Guys, when we ever get that right brain stimulated and begin to think, sometimes we, have, well, sometimes we uh, address Christianity with left brain only, right? Facts, information, points, right? Facts, information, points is what I got to do. But guys, if we ever get that right brain going, a matter of fact, uh, I think Dr. Caroline Leaf, uh, she's an, a neuroscientist, had wrote a, a book called The Other Half of Church, uh, where it talks about how so many times we lead with a left brain church and we don't lead with the right brain side. I'll get into that another day. Really cool stuff, but I'm glad you uh, worked with me there and I hope that helps you. Um, <clears throat> so here's, an, <clears throat> excuse me, here's another question. When that red line happened, you don't have to say it out loud. This is not confession time. When that red line happened, <clears throat> how did you respond? Okay, I want you to think about this for just a moment. We're gonna, I'm going to do this incrementally. In the moment, did you think this is only a test? Or in the moment, did you think, I've got to get out of this. I've got to fix this. I've got to shut this down, right? That's what our body naturally does. This is not good. I got to get this thing back down, okay? So if we realize the test and whom it's leading us through, the test will be the difference between reacting or responding. Thank you, brother. Reacting with our flesh or responding according to the Spirit. You figured of all the coffee I drank this morning, I'd be in good shape. Amen. Now, let me share something with you again. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, and Ephesians 6, 12 helps us do this in three ways. Number one, it reminds us that the battle nor the bullets come from this world. The battle nor the bullets come from this world. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. Can I get an amen? <clears throat> I always like to put ever. Because here's the deal. So many times we think our battle is not against flesh and blood. Oh, but that one. Right? Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but did you hear what she said about me? You know? The battle is not against flesh and blood, but man, they came with an attitude today, so I'm going to give it right back. Amen? We're going to meet red line with red line. How many of you like to do that? Come on, right? Our battle is not against flesh and blood ever. Then what is it? So how many, a time, how many of you will admit that the last time you red lined it had to do with another human being? You know what I mean, right? There's a name and a face and a thing that they said or a thing that they did or a thing that they didn't do, and that got me. And that's just the reality. When we redline, there's often a name or a face or a group or something like that that happens, and then the problem is if we meet that with a name and a face or a group, then we're going to fight the name, the face, and the group. But if we understand that this is only a test, then we have to ask ourselves more questions, right? right? How many of you will agree with me that when we redline, God is probably trying to expose strongholds in our lives more than he's worried about the situation? Now, I'm getting personal, okay? Help me, let me get personal for just a minute. <clears throat> See, we understand through the scriptures that I just told you that the weapons are not carnal, which are worldly, but they're mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. Now, I'll just be honest with you. When I'm going through a hard time and I read that scripture, this is how I read it. 
The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, okay, I'm still spiritual here, but are mighty for the pulling down of my enemies. I like that. You know, have, do y'all ever think that? You know, when, when you're thinking it, when you're going through that scripture, there's still something in your mind that says that are mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. You're not thinking about the strongholds within yourself. You're thinking about this thing that is, seems like a stronghold to you that is exterior of you. It's their problem. It's that thing that happened that made me redline. That's the stronghold. And scripture here is not telling us that at all. He's saying that what we want to do is fix the issue in front of us, and God is wanting to use the issue to fix the issues inside of us. I didn't get any amens on that one. Let me say it over here. This way. We want God to fix the stronghold out here. And he's saying, guys, the stronghold is in between here. And the stronghold is in here. Because if I can fix the stronghold in you, it don't matter if the world falls apart around you. Right? It don't matter. I could be in a prison cell praising God and watch the chains fall. Amen? It don't matter. But as long as we keep trying to change our exterior, and that'll help us feel better on the interior, and that'll make our gauge go down, it's all a matter of the roller coaster ride, right? Good day, bad day, good day, bad day. This exterior thing happened, bad day. This exterior happened, good day. And we're constantly on this roller coaster here. Folks, I, I used to like roller coasters. Something happened when I turned 40, and roller coasters are a no-go for me anymore. Y'all know what I'm saying? I can't do it. I don't want to ride that roller coaster, and I don't like to see other people gripping for dear life, not knowing how to get off this thing. I'm trying to help you and tell you, this is how we get off this thing. This is what it means to be led by the Spirit, to, so we go, oh, with them, oh, with them, oh, with that situation, oh, my transmission, oh, that's going on here, and God's saying, can I show you something? Because I'm in control completely, and... Uh, I can fix that. That's not a problem. But what about you? You know, what, what, what are you, what's exposing right now? Whenever the heat turns up, right, and we're melting you down and purifying you once again, what is that stuff sitting on the top of the pure gold? Let's, let's look at that and let's skim that off. Amen? But if we're, if we're blaming situations and people and our battle is out there, guess what happens when we cool back down? That dross never gets removed, and he's got to do it again. Amen? <clears throat> I thank God that there are battles that I faced back then that I thought were going to be my ruin, but they were for my strengthening. And next time I hit that battle, guess what? That dross, that part, it's a victory in my life. How many of you say there are victories in my life that I have gone through some mess, but now when it comes up, it ain't no big deal because I know God is faithful. Amen? Guys, that, that thing that you just said, that your victory, that, that, uh, that trophy that you've got sitting there, God wants to add to your trophy room. Amen? God wants to add to your trophy room because he is not done with us yet. <clears throat> so God is wanting to fix us using the issues in front of us. The weapons of our warfare are not worldly, but they are mighty indeed. So what is, what is our part in this? How do, we, how do we take advantage? How do we walk in this truth? Okay, this is the truth from the word of God himself, but how do we walk in the truth? That's great, Brandon. Great scripture, great story. And here's the question. How does my feet walk in that truth? How do I get in there? And so today, I want to start, I want to go in with you because here's where the rubber actually meets the road. This is where it goes from intellectual stimulation to victory in Jesus. Amen? This is where it goes from, I learned another lesson, I got my notebook out, I, I, I'm good. Wow, that was great, you know. Maybe even a paradigm shift for some of you. But until it becomes something on your feet and something you walk in, it never really becomes a reality to you. And so that what will happen in a situation like that, whenever you're preached at every Sunday and your Bible studies and everything, and you see other people walking in victory and you don't, one of the two things are happening. Either you're just going to turn religious and say that this is all there is to God, or you'll go the other way. And I've been here too, where I said, you know what? If Christianity is not real and it really works for everybody else except for me, 
they must have drank some sort of Kool-Aid and I'm out. You know, I've been there too because I'm looking for something real just like anybody else. And if it doesn't become real, I'm going to think, well, if I'm going to survive in this scene, I've got to become religious and talk the Jesus talk. Or in my heart, I have zero faith at all. A lot of knowledge, zero faith and no action. And I'm just going to go do my thing instead. And we revert to that. And that's why so many people continue to stay spiritual, immature. Am I preaching yet? Okay, just check and make sure you guys are listening. So what do we do? Number one, this takes some intentional time with God. This takes intentional time with, not just time with God. That's hard enough, I know. But this is intentional time with God. An intentional introspection and availability to the Spirit of God with ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. Psalms 139 23 and 24 say this. This is David speaking. And this is the heart that you need to have. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Now that's a real prayer right there, is it not? That's where the rubber begins to meet the road. God, I give you permission. You already see me anyways. He made it clear at the top part of that verse. You, you see me. You know me. Wherever I go, you go. You know my sitting down, my standing up. If I, lay, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. You know me. You know my innermost thoughts. But then he's saying, search me. He basically, show me what you see. I need to see what you see. I need some light on my face so that I could see what you see. So that ends up at the place of faith. The place of faith is when God shows you and he speaks to you because we know through scripture that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the what? Thank you. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And when the word of God exposes something to you, wow, that's amazing, is it not? Does anybody love hearing hearing the voice of God in their life? Hello, I do too, okay? My kids hear my voice all the time. Son, I said, go clean your room. You know, wouldn't it be silly if my daughter and my son, I would say, it's time to go clean your rooms, guys. And they went into the living room and they sat down and they wrote down what I said and said, and James says to Caitlin, Caitlin, would you believe it? Daddy spoke to us. He said, clean your room. Oh, how cool is that? Let's dissect this out for just a moment. You know, let's, let's see what it really means to clean and then your, and then room. Like, where is this room? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We do this. And we're like, you know, they just want to sit down. And I'm going, clean your room. You know, clean your room. It's down the hallway to the left. Go get it. You know what I mean? It's like, we do that to God all the time. And we think just because we heard him, that's the end of the story. It's the beginning of the story. Amen? Because when their room is clean, they see a smile on their father's face. And everything is happy in the home. You know what I mean? It's that there's this obedience in faith. And that's where we stop so many times. So there's this place of faith. Place of empowering. Place of testing. Place of the word. Place of faith. And we cannot miss these things. Okay? James wrote that faith without works is dead. I like to say faith without feet is false. Paul wrote that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Jesus said in John 14, 15 through 18, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot see receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells in with you and will be in you. So Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. What does that mean? If you love me, you'll obey my commands. If, have you ever had gone down to a trip to Mexico, anybody like Cabo or something like that? And you got to take that weird shuttle if you want to go into town and get something. And the roads are like this narrow and the bus is that narrow. And there are people on both sides, Lord help them. 
you know, and you, and you go down to a foreign country that way, someplace you don't really trust, you know, I praise God I live in America, and man, it was good to put my feet back in Texas soil, you know what I mean? But while I was down there, there was always this weird feeling of, should I get in the car with this person? Should I go on that side of town, you know? Should I trust that dude going, here, aki, aki, you know? Uh, should, I, should, should I, what should I do, you know, um, uh, in this situation? And, and there was just this constant turmoil that I just didn't trust. I just didn't trust. How would you feel if your children walked up to you and you gave them the best advice you could possibly give them? Or you said, I'm here to help you. And they look you in the eye and say, I just don't trust you. Wow. But when we don't walk in faith, Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. And I love the people. I trust the people that I love. Amen. I trust you. I love you. And Jesus is saying, if you love me, you'll go. You'll do it. I've got the lamp. I've got everything. You've got the feet. Let's go. Search me, O God. Know my heart, try me, and know my anxieties. See if there's any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way. There's where our faith lies. Oh, it's great to know what's wrong with you. How many of you like to self-diagnose? Hey, Google, what? WebMD, something's going on. <laughs> what does that mean? You know what I mean? We love to self-diagnose. We like to find out what's wrong with us. And even in Christian realms, it's great Sometimes it feels good to have your toes stepped on. I needed that, Pastor. Thank you. You know, you read my mail. And there's something inside of you that says that was good. However, if, if we don't go in the way with what we know, we, it's, it's for nothing. Absolutely for nothing. It says, lead me in the way everlasting. Now, let's turn to James chapter 1, 19 through 25. And we're going to spend just a short time on this. James chapter 1, 19 through 25 says this. So then, my beloved brethren, let each man be swift to hear. Guys, this is important. Underline that. Swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. You know, my grandmother always told me when I was younger, Brandon, God gave you two ears and one mouth so that you will listen twice as much as you speak. See, I had the problem. I felt like I had five mouths in one ear. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I knew everything, of course. He gave you two ears and one mouth, so you listen twice as much as you speak. Be swift to speak, or swift to hear, excuse me, slow to speak, good grief, slow to wrath, verse 20, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Verse 21, this is one of my favorite verses. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls, but be doers of the word, not only hearers, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. Let me stop right there. A hearer of the word is looking into the mirror of the word. Let me say that again. A hearer of the word, not just a listening, but a hearer of the word, right? Open the eyes of my heart. Open the ears of my heart. Let me hear what the spirit of the Lord has to say. A hearer of the word is looking into the mirror of the word. It's not just for you to know. It's not so you can go preach at somebody else, okay? Let me, let me just do a commercial for you. I don't know how many pastors, including myself, sometimes get into this thing where I'm studying and I'm listening for God so that I can preach to you on Sunday morning. Solely, solely, right? God, speak to me. What, what's, what, what do you want me to teach them? What do you, and that's exciting, and I love it, and I do get something out of that. But a lot of times, pastors will get into that routine and rarely ever get into the Word and say, God, speak to me. God, speak to me. Pastors will be holding out mirrors so that you can see yourself all Sunday, but the mirror doesn't have a mirror on the backside of it, so he can't see himself, right? That's dangerous territory to get into. And a lot of times, if we're not careful, we'll do the same thing. Well, this scripture is so that I can go share with somebody else. Great, do it. 
But make sure you're getting your word too. Make sure you flip that mirror around so that you can see your own face. How many of you would ever go outside the house to church without looking into the mirror? I didn't this morning. I need that mirror. Some of you have two or three mirrors and they go all the way around you. That's a good idea too because sometimes there's something going on back there you don't know until somebody tells you about it, right? We have mirrors to see. A hearer of the word is looking into the mirror of the word. What is the word intended to show is a question. Verse 24, I believe, answers that. For he observes who? Himself. He observes himself in the word. And so this says in the context, he goes away and immediately forgets what? what? What he looks like? No, no, no. Scripture goes further than that, right? Scripture says that the one who looks into a mirror and doesn't do it, he's like a man who observes himself in a mirror, goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was, what kind of person, what you're really made of. You, when God made you, that's what you see when you look into this mirror. I can dress myself however I want to and act, and they even talk with an accent, mate, right? But that ain't me. Right? I can act and I can play the part and I can wear the clothes and I can do everything. But when I look into this, I see what God sees through it all. Amen? So that's why some of us don't like to go here because we don't want to know what God sees because we know our hearts. But guess what? Let me tr- I promise you one thing. There's never been a time, even though as filthy as I felt after sinning, that I've ever gone to the Lord and he condemned me. You know why? Scripture says there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is grace upon grace upon grace. And there's no place too far where God's hand cannot reach you. No place too far. That is why I don't fear the mirror anymore. Okay? It's just getting real with where I am so that I can get real with where I'm going. I can't pass that step. I've got to be where God needs me to be today. So I don't want to be the man who deceives myself by thinking, oh, I looked into the mirror, so I'm good. That would be like looking into the mirror in the morning, just glancing just to say you did and walk into work and people are going, man, what's what's going on? Did you even try? You know what I mean? It's like, what is going on with you? You didn't even look into the mirror, did you? Not intently, I promise you. And we do this spiritually and we show up and people who have eyes to see because God gives them the spirit of discernment is looking at you going, how long has it been since you've really looked into the mirror? You know what I mean? I'm not judging you. I'm just saying there's better for you. There's a way that God wants you to walk. And let me show you what his word is intended to do. 25. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, or, con- or he is looking intently into it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Amen? This one will be blessed in what he does. Let me just share with you something. This word of God, every bit of it, not just the New Testament, not just the Old Testament, Every word in this word of God has the power and ability to illuminate the difference between what I do and why I do it. Amen? Double-edged sword with the ability to get in in between. I mean, even bone and marrow. I mean, talking about splitting hairs, you know? Like, well, I did the right thing. Well, I told them the truth. But man, you had a heart of crud when you did it. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I, I did the right thing. I showed up and I preached, but he's like, man, you have no relationship with me lately. You know, it, it, the Holy Spirit, the word of God will just get all the way in there and divide what is holy and what is not holy. He will, he will set apart the impurities if we let him. It will also humble me in the light of God's holiness and grace. Who am I that you would be mindful of me? Have you ever prayed that? 
I'm walking, I'm walking along here and I'm reading through the scriptures and I'm seeing this awesome, mighty, big, powerful, sovereign, holy God. And I look into the mirror and I see me and I'm going, how could you? You know, the song says, who am I that the Lord of all the earth could ever know my name, right? Who, who am I that he would go to the cross for me? And I have got to begin to come into agreement with God says, you're mine. I loved you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. From the beginning, I already knew you. I've got a plan for you. I've got a purpose for you. I am with you. I'm a, Jesus, like, I'm leaving you. I've got a, a helper I'm sending you. God was in the cloud. God was in the fire, right? God was on the mountaintop. God is in the tabernacle. God is in the word. God is in Christ. God is in the spirit. And God is in us, amen? Sounds like we're pretty important to him, amen? I see this when I look into scripture. Yeah, my imperfections are there, and he's still working on me. But guys, I I remember, I'm a child of God, right? A child of the king. And I possess the power within me, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the scripture says, dwells inside of you and me. I am now the tabernacle. I am that place, the veil has been torn, and we have the spirit of God, the essence of God in these earthen vessels, amen? Praise God for that. And not only that is we have the inspiration from his word. Guys, why would we not want to see it? So what is the word able to do? It illuminates who I am on the inside. It humbles me in the light of God's holiness and his grace. And it rebukes the pants off of me sometimes. Yeah? Have you ever been reading the scriptures? You're like, wow, that hurt. You know, like I just went through that and God's showing me what's going on here. Guys, We got to allow the word to hold me accountable, hold us accountable, and hold us straight. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, do they not? This word is to guide us on the path. This word is to illuminate the path. This word is to illuminate our face in the mirror, as in a mirror to the path. And I don't know about you, but I want that. I want that. And I'm incomplete without the work of God. He is still working on me. How many of you say he is still working on me? Let me tell you something. He wants to work on you today, this morning. Church is no accident today. Church is a privilege. I'm glad you got up. It's good to see you this morning. Amen? I tell people, it's good to see you. They say, it's good to be seen and not viewed. Amen. I woke up on the right side of the bed this morning, evidently. I've got breath in my lungs. That means this is breath that I'm going to give to him. I've got a heart beating in my chest, guys. I hope this means that this is a heart that you're ready to give to him today. It's, he give it to you. Why would you not give it back to him this morning? Amen? Let's see what God sees. This morning, I'm praying that God does two big things. Number one, that God grants each one of us the desire to be seen and the capacity to see what he sees. Some of us haven't taken a good long look in the mirror in a long time. I desire to be seen by God, and I want the capacity to see what he sees. Y'all stand with me for just a second. We got a scripture. Can you go back to that scripture in Psalms real quick? Is it written on there? This is what I'd like for us to do. Joseph, can you turn those lights out for me? This is what I'd like for us to do. And this isn't weird. I don't normally do anything like this, but today is going to be different. Because I like doing pastor's partners for the grown-ups too. Amen? Amen. And I want us to read the scripture together. So can we just read this together as a corporate prayer? Y'all ready? Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Let's say it again. Search me, O God, 
and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. This is what I'd like for you to do. This is going to be a little bit different. But if you'll see on your tables, I've got one lighter and four candles. And I want you just to take a minute and I want you to light those four candles. We're not going to do any seances or anything. Don't get all worried. Y'all can sit down. I just want to give you a moment to do this. I'm going to give you just a minute to get your candles lit. And the second thing I'd like for you to do, something I normally don't invite you to do, but I'd like for you to get your cell phone out. I know. Y'all can have a seat. Take a minute and light those candles in front of you and get your cell phone out. And I want to share with you something that God shared with me as I was getting ready for this sermon. So whenever I look, this is what I want you to do. Take your cell phone out, go to your phone photos, your, your, your camera, excuse me, go to your camera and put it on the reverse where it's looking back at you, like selfie mode, okay? For those of you millennials, this is called selfie mode. Everybody else, it's the reverse camera, okay? And this is what I'd like you to do. Just take note of what you see. Take note of what you see, assuming all the lights are out, and I know they've got a little bit of light here, but just take note of what you see, because here's Here's where I want us to go. This is going to lead us into next week. So many times we look into the word, and if we're not careful, we'll see everyone else's faces except for our own. And we'll even get into ministry so that we can bless other people, but never we're blessed ourselves. And we burn out, and we just stop, and we become isolated, and then we just kind of give up on it altogether. But I want you to take note, if you need to move that candle closer so that you can see, do it, because this is what illumination is for. If you can see yourself in that photo, take a picture for, for reference if you'd like to. But what is it that you look like when the light comes close to you? What is it that you see? I'll promise you right now, these candles are not glamorous, and they don't have that pretty filter to make you look pretty, okay? That's not what it's for. But whenever you have the light with you and the lamp into your feet and you're illuminated, what do you see? I don't see a crowd of people. I see me. I see myself. And this is what God is calling us to do this morning is to take a look at ourself. This is what I'm trying to illuminate. This is what I've been trying to get you to see. And let me tell you what, your worries and your cares and all that can go away if you just start listening to God this one-on-one -on -one time with him. So I wanted to give you a moment. You can stay seated if you like to, but this is what I'd like for you to do. I'd like for you to say, search me, O oh God, and know my heart, know my anxiety. See if there's any wicked way within me and lead me. Guys, make it personal this morning. We're gonna sing two songs. You can stand and worship with us. You can worship at your seat. I'm giving you two songs, nine minutes tops to respond how God wants you to respond in this moment. But take advantage of the setup and the things that we've done today to make this a reality in your life. How is God working on you? And that's what this book is all about. It's a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now I know my next step. As we worship, I just pray, Lord, the guys that you just pray and praise and do what the Holy Spirit asks you to do. Without your goodness, I would be desperate. Without your love, slave to the darkness. If it wasn't for the cross, 
you have won me with your kindness you chased me down when when i was lost where would i be if it wasn't for the cross sing hallelujah well thank you jesus i was a prisoner but now i'm not because with your blood you you bought my freedom oh hallelujah for the cross and all my shame was met with mercy and now your mercy will be my song and all the glory all the power of the cross sing hallelujah well thank you jesus i was a prisoner but now i'm not because with your blood you you bought my freedom oh hallelujah for the cross let's sing that again oh hallelujah well thank you jesus i was a prisoner but now i'm not because with your blood you you bought my freedom Oh, hallelujah for the cross. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. The rest of you stand with us as we sing this last one together. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice. Sing with me now. Sing out great. Our God, sing with me how great is our God. And all will sing how great, how great is our God. H to H. In days to age she stands. And time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God is three in one. Oh, the Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion in the Lamb, the Lion in the Lamb. Oh, sing how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, sing how great, how great is our God. You're the name above all names. Let's sing it. You're the name above all names. I'm worthy of all praise And my heart will see How great is our God Let's sing it again, come on Cause you're the name above all names Lord, you are worthy of all My heart will sing how great is our God. 
Father God, we are great and you are mighty. Father, we worship you in prayer. Lord, we love you. You're awesome. God, you are with us. You are our champion. You're our father. You are our guide. You're our helper. You're our prince of peace. You're wonderful. You're a counselor. You're a mighty God. And we're your children. Father God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, we love you. We give you glory. We give you ourself, Lord. We offer ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to your kingdom, to your name, Lord. God, we offer our hearts up to you, Lord. Illuminate who we are to you. Help us to hear from you, Father, and help us in our path on how to walk in the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brother, you can turn the lights on for me. <clears throat> <clears throat> Guys, before we dismiss, I just want to let you know that myself and we have five other elders in this church that would love nothing more than to help you with what God is telling you today. We love you. God bless you. Have a good one. Don't forget to see Miss Martha if you want to help out with meals for the Perry family. Y'all are dismissed. Thank you. <laughs>